Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Alex. I'm a Google developer expert for Firebase and I'm going to show you in this video how to upload an image to cloud storage and save the URL in Firestore. This is a video for an article that I wrote. Link is in the description below, which was recently published on the Firebase Tips and Tricks publication on media. So let's begin. As you already may know, most of our projects require in one way or another a solution to storing and serving user generated generated content such as photos, videos or documents. The easiest scalable solution that we have is to use cloud storage for Firebase. Why would we use Firebase storage? Simply because it's built at Google scale. It can grow from prototype to production effortlessly. Besides that, it can automatically pause or resume our file transfers if the app loses or regains internet connectivity. Last but not least, the Firebase SDK for cloud storage can be integrated with Firebase authentication so we can keep our files secured. This means that we can only allow access based on the user identity or specific properties of a file, such as the name of the file, the size, the content type or any other metadata. So how to upload a file to cloud storage and then read it back in an Android application. So I'll try to show you in this video a complete example of how to save an image to cloud storage, write the corresponding URL to cloud Firestore and read it back with a full code example. As you already know, we'll use a clean architecture with MVVM. So let me show you guys how our application looks like. If you see, we have a single button. If we click, we open the gallery. I have already added a single file. But before that, let me show you something. Let me open the Firebase console and check the storage, which is empty, as well as Cloud Firestore. Let's get back to Android Studio. Let's select this image. And in a few moments, it will be uploaded to Firebase storage. If we click display it, we can create a Firestore call and we get the image back and display it in our application. If you try to run the app on an emulator, please don't forget to add at least an image inside the emulator, which should be located at the following path, which should be storage, emulated, zero documents. And as you can see, I have only a single image. If you use a real device, please don't forget to have at least a single image inside your gallery. So I open this section right now. Before starting, make sure you have added the following dependencies inside the build gradle project file and the following dependencies inside the build gradle module file and as you can see we'll use hilt for android for dependency injection jetpack compose and view model for having a clean architecture application where the cloud storage and firebase calls will be performed using kotlin coroutine and asynchronous flow so what can we expect from such an application since we are creating a very simple app we only using a single screen in which we'll add a single button at the bottom of the screen on click this button will open the gallery so we can pick an image the selected image will be added to cloud storage as soon as the operation completes we'll be able to get the download url of the image and write it further to a firestore document in a real world application we we'll have implemented the authentication mechanism but to keep things simple in this example we want we'll only use a hard-coded value as the id of the user we'll also set this id as the document id why simply to distinguish which picture belongs to each user so the firestore schema would look exactly like this as you can see we'll only store the url of the image and the date of the creation as soon as the operation completes we'll display a toast message as you already seen in which we'll ask the user to display the uploaded image let me show you the storage section in which we have a directory called images and if you go inside we'll see our image if the user hits the snack bar button we create another firebase call this time to get the image when the last request completes we display the image into an async image which exists at the top of the screen to be able to process the response that we get from cloud storage as well as from firestore we create a response class that looks like this there are three important operations that we have to do. So we'll add all of them into a repository interface. So these operations are, the first one is to add the image to Firebase storage. The second one is to add the image to Firestore. And the last one is to get the image from Firestore. The corresponding implementation of these methods are present in the repository implementation class. Now, talking about the UI, we'll only have a single activity that looks as simple as 
the profile image screen, which is a composable function, contains the logic for opening the gallery and getting the download URL back and the logic for displaying the snack bar. Let me scroll a little bit. The last composable function is represented by the profile image content and contains all the logic for displaying the image in the async image. Let me scroll a little bit again. Regarding code, that's pretty much all of it. However, getting back to security to protect the privacy and also prevent abuse, always make sure that only authenticated user can read and write the data to which they've been given permission. In the official documentation, there is an important note which says, by default, a cloud storage bucket requires Firebase authentication to perform any action on the bucket's data or files. You can change your Firebase security rules for cloud storage to allow unauthenticated access. Since Firebase and your project default app engine app share this bucket, configuring public access may make newly upload app engine files publicly accessible as well. Be sure to restrict access to your cloud storage bucket again when you set up the authentication. So in a real world application, don't forget to implement the authentication mechanism. If you are interested, I have already written two articles regarding this topic. The first one is called How to Authenticate to Firebase using Google One Tap in Jetpack Compose. And the second one is called How to Handle Firebase Authentication in Clean Architecture using Jetpack Compose. Once you have the authentication mechanism in place, you can set the proper security rules in cloud storage. Besides that, you should also consider securing your Firestore database too. For that, I recommend you read another article called how to fix Firestore error, permission denied, missing or insufficient permission, in which I have explained everything about the most common error that we can get when we interact with Firestore and how to write the proper rules. As good and as it easy as the solution is, there is also a downside. None of the Firebase products support cross-product transactional operation, so you should consider nesting the calls during your addition or upload operation and handle the errors if the second operation fails. This means that you either have to delete the document from Firestore if the upload operation in cloud storage fails or the vice versa. Be also aware that at some point in time there will be a failure that the client can't roll back one of the delete operation. The most common approach for these inevitable failures that might happen is to make your code robust by handling exception and performing occasional cleanups in both places, Firestore and the Firebase storage. In conclusion, that's the simple solution for adding an image to cloud storage and writing the corresponding URL in Firestore. I hope you find this video useful and if you have any question regarding this topic feel free and leave a comment in the section below. So in the end guys you can check the entire article on Medium. If you enjoyed the video please hit the like button. If you think you learned something new please subscribe to my channel because you already know more videos are coming. Bye!